The Republican National Committee, RNC, has announced September 27th as the date for the second presidential candidate debate. It will be held at the Ronald Reagan Library in Simi Valley, California. Participation criteria have also been released. They are 3% rating in two national polls, or 3% in one national poll and 2% in two early state nominating state polls, along with 50,000 unique donors and at least 200 unique donors from at least 20 states or territories. So upping the stakes there in the second debate. Let's talk about how the coming debates and the latest Trump indictment will affect the presidential campaign. Joining us tonight, Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Thanks for being here. It's good to be here, Brett. In person. Yes. See you all the time on the TV. It's good to see you. You said... Um, that oppo research is just something you don't like, opposition research. And you've seen it already in this campaign. Reporters asking questions, they're, they're kind of fed. But you have to form clear contrasts with your opponents. So let's, let's do that. Why would someone choose you specifically over your top two opponent, opponents, former President Trump and Governor Ron DeSantis? So I think I'm, Brett, the only candidate who can actually unite this country and deliver a Ronald Reagan 1980-style landslide election. I'm the candidate who's not just running from something. I'm leading us to run to something, to our vision of what it means to be an American. That's bringing young people along with us in droves in this campaign. I am the youngest person ever to run in the Republican Party. But I think it's more than just my age. I think it's about having, I see the problems that we see in the country, but I still believe we are on our way up. And we see that in the data where 40% of the donors to our campaign actually are first time ever donors to the GOP in any form compared to 2% for normal candidates. And I do think it's important that we deliver a landslide, not a 50.1 electoral margin this time around. And I think I'm the only candidate in a position to do it. So you don't think former President Trump or Governor DeSantis could have that kind of impact on this race? I think either of them can beat Joe Biden. I want to be very honest about that. I think many Republicans in this race can. I think I'm the only one who can actually deliver a landslide like Reagan did in 80. You've strongly come to the defense of the former president uh, this week, saying yes. that uh, what you've seen, oh, this is about first principles, and that what you've seen this week is akin to banana republic tactics taken to take out a political opponent. Yes, that's right. I've read each of the indictments before I form my judgment, but I believe each of these indictments, Brett, reek of politicization. I'm now polling third in the Republican primary. It would be very easy for me if Donald Trump were eliminated from competition. That is not how I want to win this race. I want to win by convincing the voters to vote for me because we the people determine who leads the country. That's the American way, not the federal police state eliminating the competition. You read the indictment about January 6th and what the president did or did not do there. But after the events of January 6th, 2021, you you sounded different. You wrote in your book uh, this, uh, quote, it was a dark day for democracy. The loser of the last election refused to concede the race, claimed the election was stolen, raised hundreds of millions of dollars from loyal supporters and is running for executive office again. Six days later, you tweeted this. What Trump did last week was wrong, downright abhorrent, plain and simple. I've said it before, and I did so in my piece. So did anything change from that time to this time? No, actually. In that piece, the piece I was referring to was a piece I wrote in the Wall Street Journal days after January 6, 2021, where I I argued that the real cause was systematic, pervasive censorship by the government co-opting social media companies to silence content. So what I said yesterday is the same thing as I said before. There's a different between, difference between a bad judgment and a crime. Would I have made the same judgments that Trump made? Absolutely not. I'm running in this election for a reason. But that's not the same thing as a crime. And my rule of thumb is if you're going to bring a case during an election against a prior U.S. president, it better darn well not be an untested legal theory that was made up on the fly. That's exactly what we've seen now in three out of three indictments. And I just think it is wrong and sets a dangerous precedent in this country. And there are a lot of Republicans who think like you do, and they, are, they, they see the former president in this prism as a sympathetic character. That's how they talk about it. Um, I guess what I'm saying is, do, are you holding back going head to head with the former president in any way in this primary, as opposed to how you talked about him back then? I'm not afraid of drawing contrast with anybody and drawing differences in policy or opinions. I'm not in this race to attack anybody. I personally think Donald Trump was an excellent president. 
I think that his defeat of Hillary Clinton in 2016 was probably the single most important political event in the 21st century in this country. But I believe I am better positioned to take the America first agenda even further than Trump did. I think it's a fact, Brett. We have to admit it. I don't blame Trump or anybody else for this. 30 percent of this country becomes psychiatrically ill when he's in the White House. I'm not yet having that effect on people, even when I'm advancing the same policies, in some instances going even further. That's how we unite this country. I think it's not by compromising on our principles. It's by being uncompromising about who we are, but doing it based on moral foundations and not vengeance and grievance. Last thing That's on this. the way I'll lead. Last thing on this. I mean, politically, what I'm saying is, is that the, the former president could go up because of this indictment, as we've seen in previous indictments, not only in fundraising, but in the polls. So how do you fight that in this primary as he's getting all the oxygen in the room during these times? Well, look, I look forward to the debate stage. I think this is going to be a great opportunity to introduce myself to the country. You think I he'll started show the polls. Up? I don't I don't expect him to I take him at his word. I think it's unlikely that he shows up based on his public comments. I also think that, you know what, as long as he shows up at some point in the process, I'm fine with that. I started at zero point zero percent in March. I'm polling at third ahead of the first primary. I think we are on our way to win this primary and more importantly, to win this general election in a landslide, bringing young people and new people into the GOP along with us. That's what we're already doing. You wrote a book uh, about woke. And yes. you kind of really illuminated the issue before it became popular to do so. Um, a New York Times Siena poll this week asked, which of these two Republicans would you be more likely to support in a Republican primary? A candidate who focuses on defeating radical woke ideology in our schools, media and culture, 24 percent. A candidate who focuses on restoring law and order in our streets and at our border, 65 percent. You know, polls are polls, and you can read them however you want to read them. Do you think that there is, and Governor DeSantis has, I asked him about this this week, too much focus on this? Uh, do you think that it's enough? Uh, how do you balance that out in, in policy? So look, I wrote the book on wokeness in America before many Republicans even knew what this word was. But what I have said since day one of this campaign is that wokeism, like so many of the, the other isms, climatism, transgenderism, covidism, these are symptoms of a deeper void in our country, a void of purpose and meaning and identity. And so, yes, I think fixating on the symptom too much may cause us to miss the plot. The real void is a void of what it means to be an American today. That's the void I'm looking to fill. And I think the way we defeat wokeness is not with a hammer. It is by diluting it to irrelevance, by filling the vacuum of purpose in this country with a vision of what it means to be a citizen of this nation. That's my approach in the campaign, and I think it's a little bit different than some of the other candidates. I want to ask you about something you said in an interview uh, over the past day or so. Uh, take a listen. I don't believe the government has told us the truth. Again, I'm driven by evidence and data. What I've seen in the last several years is we have to be skeptical of what the government does tell us. I haven't seen evidence to the contrary, but do I believe everything the government told us about it? Absolutely not. To be fair, you were asked if 9-11 was an inside job, and you tweeted out, do I believe our government has been completely forthright about 9-11? No, Al Qaeda clearly planned and executed the attacks, but we have never fully addressed who knew what in the Saudi government about it. We can handle the truth. Do you believe 9-11 was an inside job? I don't, okay. but I but I do but believe you that don't know the about government the Saudi's role. Exactly, exactly but right. As the and I don't think we've ever gotten straight answers about that. As Republicans are criticizing the Biden administration for their policy towards Saudi Arabia, and you're going to talk about foreign policy, do you think it's the right thing to go down this kind of asking questions about this um, on a foreign policy perspective, dip diplomacy wise, uh, in this venue? So, Brett, I come at it from the perspective of demanding truth from the government overall. I think that is a top issue right now. The truth about how our money is actually being spent in Ukraine. The truth about the shooter's manifesto in Nashville, where I was earlier today, a government that pledged to release that manifesto, but which has not. The truth about the COVID-19 lab origin. So for me, I'm not actually, this is the first time I'd actually talked about the 9-11 issue. And you were asked about it, to be fair. I was asked about it directly, but this is, Part of the broader spirit of this campaign is we live in a moment where the government tells us we can't handle the truth. Actually, I believe we, the people in this country, we can handle the truth. And we live in a moment where we demand the truth. That's why we fought an American revolution to say that we, the people, determine how our government governs and they're accountable to us, not the other way around. 
And that rejects the old world vision that it is a small group of elites that decide behind the palace halls what's right for everybody else at large. So that's actually a fundamental theme for this campaign, Brett. And it shows up in many ways. Last thing, uh, do you think Joe Biden's going to be the nominee on the Democratic side? I expect to be the Republican nominee. And if I am, I do not expect him to be the Democratic nominee. I don't think they're going to let him run against me. So Sacramento Bee um, has Governor Gavin Newsom taking fundraising steps often used by potential presidential candidates, setting up multiple committees that in their first three months have raised and spent millions of dollars. He said he has no desire to be the nominee, but you don't think Biden's going to be it. I don't think that Biden's going to be the nominee unless Trump is. But I expect to be the Republican nominee, and I am preparing to face off against someone other than Joe Biden. I think Gavin Newsom is pretty likely. People are learning a lot more about you. You have a young family, uh, a surgeon wife. Yes. How old are your kids? My older son's three and a half, and my younger son just turned one on July 5th. Congratulations. you got a long way to go. Uh, We're grateful for everything that's been given to us, and now we want to pass this on to the next generation. That's why I'm in the race. We'll see you on the stage in Milwaukee. Look forward to it, Brett. Thank you, Vivian. Up next, the panel on the latest Trump indictment and whether the justice system is now...